Hello, good morning. It's a wonderful Wednesday. My name is Denise Yapomai J and I serve you AM News. Let's start from the man of the moment because at least 100,000 people gathered at the Jubilee Park in the Ashanti regional capital of Kumase for the official outdooring of Dr. Matthew Pokuprempe as Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's running mate for the 2024 general elections. The delegation paid a curtsy call on Asantehene Otunfo Seti to the second who said, Dr. Opoku Prempe is a son and will be praying for him to succeed and strongly advise him to be humble and work with Dr. Baumia while insisting Dr. Opoku Prempe is not arrogant. Now, <laughs> Dr. Baumia Kacha and Zami the National Sir. Dr. Baumia, O2 was in the Catro, but in the Nana, I shall answer. So, maybe I also take you know, and for Sobia and Abama, so with them. Maybe I take you know, and for Sobia, and I was so busy. Monte, Montiano, so, so, maybe I am a Kazachan with them, Matunufo. So, my main control. My doctor Baumia, no, 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 so <laughs> Metitin will fear men who are dentin and they are Casa. So, come, dear Cano, made a mess out with his antessa, a man in Well, President Tekufadu, who introduced the duo to Asantehene, said he was confident the two can win power for the party. Wow, fear. I fear. Hello, Nana. Unana. I got a fourth year friend with Napo. We are in the same I'm a Messias. I'm minister, so I want my band. Oh, no. And I hear you, Ramabia. A Yenichan National Council. If you know, I could say a person, PC Mono, who be a national councillor, or can say, Debbie and Fata. Yen Yina, I'm a Hobakan, unanimous. Of the National Council, I can say Napo Matthew Poko Prempe and Sir Efata. So no, I never have a car. You are my own. And it is the end of the plan. I say, Matthew, me and me, and me, you were the actual. I am Matthew. I am no one here, Juma. It is the minimum. We are one day, and it is only between here. And we say Ghana. 7th of December, a bay. A banner bow on your fire. A Juma Ghana for a bit of a show and son. Won't you bet to me? I yell, I'm a bro. So I'm a yeepah. 
And here's the man of the moment, Dr. Matthew Opokuprempe. School structures are yes, school don't do a yes, school buildings are yes, a bit to a nekufuado, a beard to a nekufuado. In fact, a year of you, a collaco job be easier, no mutia, a zanfi, and I do not come for a headache, watch him. Namukaya was here, your Pabu of Sobutia school fees, and I could for a headache. On no quarter president, one person, I so busy hospital, Baku, 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 a hundred and then eleven. Umpa way, Napa, dear. That's all for the other little guy that could have done. Over that to be on the other move, now why not a neighbor? Young Quetro, Young Quetro, Young Quetro, Yamutia, Opia, Odim, Motia, Mokohana Droy, Motia, the nine hundred cheap de Bois. As you are going, what's that in my hand? As you are going, the summer, the summer, and then here, the baby, the wedding, some moon, you are now bow, Mr. Day, Mr. Day, what you are now bow, what you are now bow, what you are now bow. Now, away from the MPP, Shraj boss Joseph Wetau is bemoaning how the country continues to look on for Galamsey to destroy the environment and impact the fundamental human rights. Speaking at the 11th Juris Confab at the University of Cape Coast, the Shraj boss says justifying illegal acts on the basis of lack of jobs, jobs, I beg your pardon, deprives many of their fundamental human rights to clean environment and portable sources of water. The Shraj boss was upset about how illegal mining is still ravaging the country's forests, rivers and water bodies. The devastating impact of unregulated mining, popularly referred to as Galamse, on the environment is a threat beyond debates. The wanton destruction of water bodies, interruption of biodiversity, unmeasured use of mercury, destruction of cocoa farms is well documented for me to even go into any further detail. As humans, our existence is heavily dependent on the environment. And as such, the destruction of the environment certainly poses a very great existential threat to our survival. In the midst of this destruction, one may ask, does the 1992 Constitution guarantee the right to clean and safe environment? The answer is yes. And what are we doing about that? The answer is nobody cares. People are looking for money. People are justifying why in the uh, a situation of joblessness, why can't the youth destroy the environment to make a living? That is our response as Ghanaians. Yusuf Wital also spoke about the arrest and persecution of journalists under the guise of breach of peace and false news publication. Arrest and prosecution of journalists. We have statistics everywhere that show how despite the triumphs, quote unquote, of the repeal of the criminal libel and sedition laws and others. We are using innocuous laws in the I mean, in the Criminal Offences Act, such as breach of peace, causing fear and panic, publication of false news, to arrest journalists and others. Recent poll showing on the World Press Freedom Index is as a result of these acts against journalists. The Dean of the UCC School of Law, Julia Salman Aite, 
and a lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. Mami Ifwa Adazikum, called for the protection and advancement of women's rights and the fundamental human rights of the citizenry in general. A recent local example includes the patient of a Winneba hospital who, after being discharged, was allegedly dumped by the roadside by an ambulance shortly after the patient met their unfortunate death. Now this is not simply a moral or an ethical or health or medical issue. It is also a legal issue. I want to say that gender equality is not just a woman's thing. It's a human thing that requires all of us to be involved. Imagine a country where everyone, male and female, feels comfortable being who they are without fear of discrimination based on gender. So be a haven of peace and tranquility. But to realize that kind of haven starts with good laws and effective enforcement of those good laws. The 11 juries confab assembled minds and hearts in the legal fraternity to discuss pertinent issues concerning law. Now, the strike by the Civil and Local Government Staff Association, CLOCSAG, has started to bite hard as workers abandon work over government's failure to implement a new salary structure for its members. CLOCSAG began the strike on July 3, insisting they will not return to work until their demands are met. This is Kenneth JC's report on how the strike is affecting clients of the Registrar General's Department and the Ministries. At the Registrar General's Department, there were just a few people around when the news team got there. These security men are here just to inform clients about the strike. Some of the clients shared their frustration with Joy News. Um, this morning I came here to do a business registration for a client. Um, from what I know, he needed to, to get to secure other documents for his business, but as of now, um, from the look of things, it's not going to be possible. And moreover, too, I came here for premium service, so I expect the certificate to be ready within one week. So this is how urgent it is for me. Yeah, for the first time today. Um, I don't know, I can't really tell, but I'll be hanging around to see whether I'll, 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 I'll get someone inside to assist me, because this is very important for me. Um, for that, I don't really go into that. So their agreement with government service structure, I don't really go into that. What I want is come here for the work to be done for me, then go home. I came to do a renewal of my business certificate. But I have to return home. Because without renewing, uh, it means that you are working legally. So I have to, uh, the government has to do something about it. Um, so that we can we'll be able to renew our document for us to operate our businesses. So sure, sure. Uh, if they call off the strike, so I'll come back, come back again and do it. The Registrar General's Department handles the registration of marriages, registration of business entities, intellectual properties, insolvency and liquidation, among others. All these activities have halted due to the strike. The situation was similar at the ministries. Most offices have red bands on fenced walls, trees, main entrances and doors. There's a sigh of relief for residents of Batinori community following the construction of Community Health Planning Services Compound for the area. Hitherto, the patients, especially pregnant women, used to travel several kilometers to access quality health care. The Wild West District Assembly, led by its Chief Executive Vida Dorothy, handed over the CHIPS compound to the community. Join News' Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports that the Assembly also commissioned a borehole and a five-unit furnished teacher's quarters at Genob. Regarded as one of the poorest districts in the country, the World West District, being one of the beneficiary districts for the Gulf of Guinea Northern Region project, Embark on infrastructure drive, aim at lifting the people out from the poverty quagmire, they are willing to improve the education, health, and social well being of the people. But in Oriri, a farming community in the district over the years has been without a health facility to take care of the medical needs of the people. What was the district chief executive, 
Vare Dorote did not hesitate on ceding to the request of the construction of a chips compound for the community. People around the catchment era of Gurungu, particularly the Batunuri, will get their health services from this facility. In fact, it is a facility that is a very nice one, and that is the first health facility that we have constructed as an assembly so far. We have planned again to construct more in other communities. What was this week's Director of Health Services, Cecilia Kakaraba, was commanding the Wawa District Assembly for the project, also penciled a request which she said will improve access to health care in the enclave. Uh, I will plead and also appeal that even after handing over this beautiful project and adding on our number of chief compounds in the district, I will also plead with the District Assembly and the Soko, Pro Soko Project, if they could also consider adding water facility and then motorbike uh, to this uh, uh, facility that is being handed over to us. Nurses at the facility, including Guru Masa district in charge, Mumun Abu Bakar, could not hide their joy recounting the challenges pregnant women used to go through to access quality health care. I think it was very challenging. We have a stream down when you are moving towards Grungu and it is not easy for a pregnant woman to cross and access services at Grungu Health Centre and I think it is a great relief today. Once there is a facility access becomes easy and there will not be any hustle to take a pregnant woman to Grungu. I think it is very good for us to have this facility for access of health services. Another community that is benefiting from the Soko project is Mountain where a borehole was drilled for the community. According to a district chief executive, Vare Dorote, nine boreholes has been drilled under the project. Before the drilling of this borehole, uh, the people were having a lot of challenges as to how to get portable water. When they came to the office to request for the borehole, they made me to understand that the two boreholes they have that used to break down frequently. When they break down, they go to, they travel to Ga, sometimes even to Gadi here. That is, these are nearby communities to fetch water. And so they were having a lot of water challenges until we came and then drilled this borehole for them. The last project commissioned by the Wawa District Chief Executive was a five unit teacher's quarters at Jumbo for the Jumbo Primary School. We all know that when the teacher lives with the student or the, the child and teaches that child, that child becomes a better person. But if you are far away, the child wants to have a feel of you, you are not close by. That child will not grow very well. That child will not learn very well. And so I would like you to urge all your teachers, and I will even urge them that whether you are able to get a room to stay in, we are hoping that if resources are available, we can put up more uh, uh, teachers' quarters all over the Well, young Ghanaian girls are being urged to embrace STEM and ICT fields since the world is shifting towards digitalization. To prevent them from lagging behind in the technological advancement, the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization organized an event which brought together students and stakeholders to discuss prospects in STEM and ICT development. Here's the full report. Since the introduction of STEM education in the Ghanaian education system, more students have shown interest in pursuing STEM-related programs. However, global statistics indicate that women represent only 28% of the STEM workforce worldwide. Consequently, school-going girls are being encouraged to take an interest in STEM and ICT programs 
to keep up with the digital transformation of the world. In celebration of the National Girls in ICT Day, the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization organized an event which brought together students and stakeholders to discuss the importance of staying updated with STEM and ICT developments. Founder and CEO of Dynamic Data Solutions Limited, Yvette Adiono, expressed that her company is open to helping students who want to learn ICT. I decided that I cannot be here alone. So it's important to bring up the women in the organization to take a real interest in ICT. So I started an internship program. And I'm happy to say that we've had so many young women who have gone through Dimension Data and are now serving in various capacities in the technology departments of various companies in Ghana and also within our company still. I have been on this journey, I'm continuing on this journey and hoping that we'll be able to pass this on to many more young women to take up the mantle. If you want to take up an internship, we will do so. And anything else you would like for us to help you move ahead, we would love to do that. Board Chair of the Ghana Domain Name Registry, Dr. Tina Nanaya Owusu Prempe, added that since internet connectivity is what drives STEM and ICT programs, she looks forward to more affordable and accessible internet connections. I am looking forward to see internet become more affordable. Do you like that? More accessible. Do you like that? Do you understand? Yes. Penetration, when I say penetration, is going into remote areas. Connectivity, not it's not, oh, I lost connection. You want to call somebody, you're going to sit on top of a tree before you can talk. And I know that with the launch of the 5G, Ghana is going to go far, faster than we ever thought, faster than we ever thought. Operating under the theme leadership, many women leaders from various institutions shared their stories to inspire the girls. Well, in an all-boys academic smackdown for supremacy, Kumasi High School has lifted their first regional trophy of the Gold PLC National Science and Mass Quiz in the Ashanti region. Qualifying to the grand finale as a top runner-up, the Mrantie were on phase to defeat two arch-rivals, Opokuwari School and Prempe Koli, to satisfy their hunger for a trophy. The school's historic victory it's coinciding with their 60th anniversary celebration. Emmanuel Bright Quick reports from Kumase. The atmosphere ahead of the grand finale was charged with anthems from the three schools. First, the two rivals, Prempe College and Opokuwari School. Then, the Mrantia from Kumasi High School. This was in anticipation of a win for all the three schools. But as the contest started and progressed, it became clearer the winners for the contest. Kumasi High School dominated in all the rounds of the contest to clinch the ultimate title. In finance. Half a farthing in religion. I was the most a widow once gave. Yes, Kumar say hi. Might. That is correct. And so this is what you would term as a double blessing for the boys from Kumasi High School. They have won the National Science and Math Quiz Ashanti Regional Edition. And also, they won the regional debates 
in a year they are celebrating their 60th anniversary. Say now, you people can speak English because you've won the debates. Yeah. And now you have Brela in a sense. Yes. How do you feel? Actually, I don't even know what to say. I'm so, I'm so enthusiastic. Like, I, I just feel so happy. I don't know what to say. I can't even express my feeling at the moment. Let's let's come and talk. Really, I should let somebody. <laughs> Let me find out. Your brother says he can't talk, but how do you feel? Well, I feel very good. Like we've worked so hard, many years we've been struggling to clinch the trophy, but today the Lord has made it for us. So like it's a nice experience. Today, the Santasi Tigers have been tamed. The Sofo Line Lions have been domesticated. Yes. And we use the formula of potassium hydrogen sulfide to subdue them. So this is just the beginning. When we get the finals, it will be crossfire. And this could that crosses as we are going to crash them. This year the motto is we are winning everything. This is our 60th anniversary. We are winning everything. We are going to the nationals and we are winning everything. This you know this one we were we were just training. This one is just a friendly match. This is a down it's, it's a down ball, right? It's a down ball. It's a down ball. It's, a down ball. it's an easy win. Simple. Before the contest, we had Stephen, 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 Stephen in the Bible. Did you did you did you hear that he was stoned? And right now he's stoned. Stephen is stoned. He, I, I told the OGs that we are going to do them as they did to us last two years. And we've done it. We're done. Feet. Feet. We've got to the Spartans. We've got to the Spartans. We won this for Dr. Yao Asai Edutu. They did a very good job. Like they made us the OGs proud. Thank, like long live Kumasi High School. They are hoping to come into the national championship and make it a treble. That's what they call it. They are winning the, the regional championship, also the national championship. Already they've won um, the regional debates as well. And they are hoping that this year is their year because it's their 60th anniversary. Emrantier. Action! Emrantier. Action! Emrantier. Action! They say, aha, eye, kumase. Reporting for Joe News. My name is Emmanuel Brands Craig. Up next is Business Updates with Sweetie Abochi. In our business story today, economist and fellow of the Institute of Fiscal Studies, Leslie Mensah, is advocating for the Finance Ministry to establish a consolidated national budget. According to Mr. Mensah, the current budget fails to capture the full extent of the national debt, including the debt stocks of state institutions like Cocoa Board. If I had my way, I would, I would put Cocoa Board on the budget. But in fact, Cocoa Board is not the only institution engaging in quasi-fiscal operations that sits outside the budget. I have, I have made this complaint several times that the, the budget we have today does not cover the full range of fiscal operations going on. The, the budget is central government oriented. To the extent that it reports the activities of parastatals, it reports central government transfers to them. Their expenditures, their borrowings are not consolidated with the, with the central government finances. That has to change. It would, be, it would be better to move towards a consolidated general government budget presentation so that we can cover a wider scope of fiscal activity. That's why, for example, we had, for a long period, been suggesting that we were consolidating the budget. Whereas off budget, we were expanding public spending. So the GET funds, the road funds, were borrowing billions that were not showing up in the public budget and not showing up in, in, in the deficit. And that's it for our business update. Denise Pomedje takes over, bro. Yes, that's it for AM News. And up next is the News Review with Dr. Kwame Asasanti's political scientist. My name is Denise Apomaiji, and as usual, enjoy the rest of the show.